you are a man and they slaughtered him, which means they killed everyone, even those who did not go and join the war. And he just said, Islam never commit genocide against against anyone. And then he enslaved all the women. Let us read. Let us see what Muhammad did, and this is from their own resource. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And remember, this is the Muslim point of view of the story, which means it doesn't mean really this is the truth. You know what I'm saying? This is a Muslim reporting the story for us, so don't take it for granted. When a Muslim reports a story, 99% of it must be a lie. And you know that. So, let us read together. They are saying that Bani Nadir and Bani Quraiza, they fought against the Prophet. How they fought against the Prophet? They violated their treaty. This is a Muslim point of view, alright? Let us take this as this is what happened. I'm not going to argue with it. So, they violate their treaty and they are the one who attack. According to the Muslims, which I believe is not true. Then, uh, the Prophet... He grant them peace after, after, even after the fight. If you read the story, you will see Muhammad, he promised them, if you lay down your arm, I will not kill you. So the stupid Jews, they lay down your, their arm. This is how stupid they are. They trusted Muhammad. Then Muhammad asked one of his companions, what do you say to do to them? He said, the Prophet, kill them all. So look what Muhammad he did. He killed all the men. All their men. It's, it, it doesn't say all those who fought. All the men, which mean, and actually the story, they, there's, there's many stories we can show you. Uh, he asked, he forced them to take off their clothes. Any, even a child, if he have little hair around his private part, they consider him as a man. If you have little hair growing around your private part, you are a man and they slaughter him, which means they killed everyone, even those who did not go and join the war. And he just said, Islam never commit genocide against, against anyone. And then he enslaved all the women. And he divided them between the Muslims and their children. So what is this? This is not a genocide? This is not genocide? So what genocide is? And he granted safety for those who embrace Islam. So what is the problem? They are not fighting him. You need to embrace Islam. You embrace Islam, we give you safety. You see it? So if you are a Jew, if you are a Christian, if you are a Hindu, you embrace Islam, you grant safety. If not, we will kill all the men, we will rape all the women, we will make them sex slaves, and we will take your children as the slaves for us. And then he excelled all the Jews. Isn't it this is a cleansing? And actually Muhammad, he said, the Arabian and Benisida will not have two religions. Arabian and Benisida, all of it, not only in Medina. So do you see the lies, how trashy their lies is, how low class it is? Just to make it short, Muhammad in the Hadith, he said, that he been ordered to fight all mankind, all people, and that there is nobody in this earth will not say that there is no God but Allah and there is no Prophet but Muhammad. And then after you say it, still you are not done. You have to start praying. And then you have to start paying. And then you have to believe in everything Muhammad he believed. And whoever does that, whoever does that, does what? Say the Shahada, establish the Salat, which means the prayer, pay the Zakat, which means money to Muhammad, because Muhammad will take from every money you, you pay for Zakat, for his pocket. And they believe in everything Muhammad said. And then, if whoever does that, his life, his wealth is protected. So what is the way to protect your life is to do this and 
this and this and this so it's not enough even to say shahada no you have to say shahada converting you have to establish the salat you have to pay the zakat and you have to believe in everything and then and only then i will not kill you unless you break any of those rules except by its right which means if you break any of those rules we will kill you like an apple upper state This is why he's saying here, like later, they're fi fighting, they order to fight whoever uh, withhold the zakat. It's a duty of Islam. You have to obey, otherwise we will kill you. Even if you convert to Islam, you don't pay zakat, money is very important. We will kill you. The Muslim, they will say to you, this is tax, this is false. This is false. Because big portion of this money go to the, to the Prophet. Uh, uh, this is why you will see the Khalifa in Islam in his history. He had 10,000 women slaves. Like one of the Khalifa, Harun Rashid, he had 10,000 women slaves in one palace. How he can afford it? Oh, from his salary. <laughs> from the zakat, no? Yeah. So, uh, let us continue with the video. So, zakat definitely is humbling. Absolutely, because now you have to pay the tax. But remember, if you have to pay the tax of uh, jizya, then Muslim also has to pay the, uh, the zakat tax, and there's no running away from it. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim one day and, and become a, you know, a, a Christian and say, hey, you know what, I can't pay the zakat anymore. Wait, so he will try to convince you now that when the Christian they pay the jizya, this is tax. Let us show you that this is nothing but a lie. <clears throat> If the zakat is tax and the jizya is tax, so why you call it zakat for Muslims and jizya for Christians? It should be the same name. Correct? Like, do we have do, do we have a, a, a special word for non-Christians in USA or in Canada when they pay tax? Like, do the Muslims in USA file jizya and the Christians they file zakat? You see the hypocrisy. If you go to the word, if you go to the interpretation of the verse, you will see the following. This is the Muslim website, as you see in the front of your eyes, and this is Ibn Kathir uh, interpretation, which is not accurate, by the way, in, Eng in the English. <coughs> the English translation of Ibn Kathir is nothing but a diet. It's a very tiny uh, book compared to the actual books, because the Muslim they decide to take everything will make Islam look ugly. However, after all the try, still Ibn Kathir exposing Islam. If you read with me here, it says that you have to fight, fight those who don't believe in Allah. Like this guy, he said, those people, they lost with you in the fight. Right? But if you read with me, you will see it says that fight those who believe uh, uh, not in Islam. And because they, because they don't believe in Islam, this is verse number 29, 28 now. Uh, in the verse number 29, fight against those who believe not in Islam. So what a Muslim says, well, Islam, you know, if you go in war with Islam, we will fight you. But they will not tell you that it is Islam is the one going in war with you. It's not the opposite. The Quran is saying clearly, Fight those who don't believe <coughs> in Allah or the last day or forbid what is etc. This is exactly the same as the hadith we quote for you. Muhammad he said, I've been ordered to fight all mankind until they, they say there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the Abdul. And then if they pay zakat and do the salat and then and only then we will not kill them. It's exactly the same. But this is now a verse in the Quran. Now those <coughs> who Muslim they fight them from the people of the book, which means the Christian and the Jews specifically. All right? You fight them because they did not acknowledge the religion of the truth. Among those people who they are the Christians. So the Christian refused to acknowledge the book of the truth, which is Islam, supposedly. So you fight them, which means you kill them. Or if they agree to pay jizya, we will not kill them. 
and the jizya have to be paid with the humiliation and subdued. Now he said to us, <coughs> oh, you have to be humble. Listen about being humble. What humble? What humble? Let us read the interpretation and see together how Muslims lie about their Quran. We flip the page and we will see the following. As you read with me. Look what the, <coughs> what the real definition of being subdued and paying jizya is in Islam. Order to fight people of the scripture until they give the jizya or they convert. <coughs> Alright? So either you convert or you pay. So who is the one who is doing the aggression? It's not the people of the book, which means the Christian, the Jews, is attacking Muhammad saying to him, either you convert or you pay, it is the Muslim doing the opposite. Right? It's the Muslims saying you either you convert or we'll kill you. If we go down, you will see here it's saying <coughs> paying the jizya is a sign of kufr and disgrace, which means when you pay jizya, it means you must be a kafir, filthy, and you should be disgraced. And why do I pay jizya? This is a penalty. In Arabic, the word jizya is coming from the word jaza, which means penalty. Until uh, either you convert, or then you will not pay jizya. So, until they pay the jizya. So you fight them until they pay. If they pay, we will not kill you. And by the way, this is a choice, <coughs> which means if you pay before we launch war against you, then we can, uh, we can accept the jizya as a solution. But if the leader, he insists, let us kill them all, it's up to him. Like uh, uh, ISIS, sometimes they say, uh, let us force them to pay the jizya when they want, and uh, if, if they need money, if they have too much money, they say, kill them. And why they are paying? Because they refuse to embrace Islam, as you see. So this is not a tax, as he said. Why you want to pay special tax for refusing to embrace Islam? That's very funny and very stupid. So it's a lie. Then he ex explained to us what it means to be subdued with willing submission. This is for translation, by the way. And yet in Waham Sagarun, it's you, like you have no choice to, to pay or not, but you have to come like a puppy. This is why it says here, and feel themselves subdued, disgraced, humiliated. Therefore, Muslims are not allowed to honor the people of Dimma, which means the Christians, Dimma here, Christians and Jews or elevate them above Muslims. So this is not only about paying money to the Muslims. This is about being not even a citizen. You are no one. You are like a slave. Nobody is allowed to respect you. If a Muslim, he did not humiliate you, he will be humiliated himself. If a Muslim did not treat you with dis disgrace and disrespect, he is not a Muslim. A Muslim cannot elevate them ab above the Muslims. For you are miserable, disgraced, humiliated. And this is what Muhammad said. Look. Muhammad, he said. Remember, this is Muhammad saying, huh? and not me. All right? Read with me. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet said. Who said that? The Prophet. Don't initiate salam to the Jewish and the Christians. And if you force, if you meet them in the, in the narrow alley, or uh, in the street, force them to the most narrow alley, which means, in the old days, they used to have an open sewage. Open sewage in the side of the street. Where the dirty water run. So, if you see a Christian...